He was called America's son, the heir to Camelot, and even the sexiest man alive. He was John F. Kennedy Jr., and like his father, he left us far too soon. From childhood, when he was known as John John, he lived under a media microscope. As a young man, he forged a successful career as assistant district attorney of New York, co-founder of the political magazine George, and more. But 17 years ago, when he was just 38, tragedy struck. Kennedy's private plane crashed into the Atlantic, killing him, his wife, Carolyn Bissett, and her sister, Lauren. A new documentary film, I Am JFK Jr., offers an intimate look at his life through those who knew him best. Despite the six-pack abs and the great physique, which he certainly had, um, and he worked hard for and he deserved, he was not a great athlete. <laughs> Despite all the pictures you see or films you see of him playing football in, in Central Park. He was terrible at touch football. He played it with such intensity and seriousness, but and they say there was go-to receivers, and John was not a go-to receiver. <laughs> With us now is Rosemarie Terenzia, one of JFK Jr.'s closest friends and chief of staff at George Magazine. She is also the author of Fairy Tale Interrupted, about her time with JFK Jr. And joining us from Los Angeles is Derek Murray, the film's director and producer. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good, good morning. Rosemarie, let me start with you, because you, you actually started at George Magazine as his personal assistant and rose to his chief of staff. Yep. And, and you've described the magazine kind of as his cocoon? Yeah, I mean, he felt, I think that's where he felt. Well, first of all, I think the magazine was who he was. It was celebrity and politics sort of merging, this pop culture and, and politics kind of merging. But also, the staff at George kind of closed ranks around him, and we were very protective of him. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when he came to the office, it was the, the one place that he could kind of <sighs> let his breath go, and he could just be how did, himself. How did you meet? We met. I was working for his partner, Michael Berman, at a PR firm. And uh, John took over my office, and I wasn't very happy about it. So. <laughs> and I let him know it, and I think he kind of got a kick out of it. So. Derek, I have to say the snippet that we played is so perfect because there is this wonderful, intimate side that you'd otherwise not really have known about him. And I was curious, how did you get so many of his close friends, the roommates, the coworkers, the friends, to talk about him? Well, you know, Vinita, it's interesting because that's what we wanted to do. We felt that everybody knew JFK Jr., but they didn't really know him. Mm -hmm. And so the mission was to go out and put together a cast that could tell us these incredibly, you know, passionate and intimate stories. And the process was that we started to reach out to folks. And fortunately, one of the first people that we reached out to was Rosemary. And Rosemary, once we kind of passed the litmus test and, uh, <laughs> and she understood that we wanted to create this, you know, inspiring film, on this fallen hero that uh, she then stepped in and helped us and we put together an amazing cast and truly this film is 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 really successful because this cast really shares they really cared about this man and it's a beautiful portrait Derek, it's interesting because you you actually didn't speak to any kennedys for this film you just you stuck with with close friends yeah, no, it's interesting. I mean, we, we started looking a lot wider originally, but once we started to put the friends in place and we started to get these true, passionate moments and stories, we followed through with that momentum. We wanted something that was very visceral and very at the moment, as opposed to something that might be more of sort of the, you know, what you might say, the, the political perspective of JFK Jr., sort of the, you know, this is who he was to the Kennedys. We wanted to get deeper into his personal story. Rosemary, I'm curious, how did he handle all that constant attention? Because you were with him so many of those times when cameras are swarming him. It's like a paparazzi yeah. around him all the time. Um, you know, I think he managed to maintain a lot of privacy. I mean, he lived his life a certain way, and he... But John was famous from the day he was born. So that wasn't strange to him. That was normal to him, and that was something that he didn't see as a burden. He saw it as a privilege, as an opportunity, as a way to, you know, do things that were great and have people pay attention so to that. So he didn't shy away from talking about his childhood? No, he didn't shy away from it. He would, you know, bring it up, as we all do, you know, in passing. But it wasn't something that we sat down and discussed, you know, as an historical, you know, event. It was just very regular, the way we all talk about our parents and our childhood and our siblings and that was really something amazing about him you um, he was he was towards the end of his life he, it looked like he was preparing himself for 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 politics do you, do you think that was inevitable I think you know it was discussed and I think he would have eventually um, I think he wanted to make George magazine a success first because I think that John was very conscious of I'm not just gonna run on my name and I but I think he would have if he when he did I think he would have run for governor Governor of New York. Yeah.
All right. Yep. Rosemary Terenzio, Derek Murray in Los Angeles, thank you both so much. I Am JFK Jr. is now in select theaters and premieres on Spike TV on August 1st.